Engineer. I'm here to give you a quick tutorial on fidget spinner step as well as a DIY on how you can create your own fidget spinners with your students. Um, I know that these are a really big fad and obsession with kids right now so I want to encourage you to take that opportunity to engage them in learning with this as opposed to just banning them or taking them away. Um, since kids are already excited about this tool, it will be a really easy way to get them on board with learning um, how to create their own. So this is a project-based learning activity that touches on all aspects of STEM, that's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, and I'm gonna flip the camera around to go through some of the different steps in the process, as well as some pros and cons of various types of spinners so that you can decide um, based on what materials you have and um, what your kids will be interested in and what their capabilities are so that you can have them create fidget spinners that are appropriate for them. Okay, so I'm gonna go through some of the various types of spinners that we have created and also give you an overview of what's included in this resource. Um, for younger kids, you're going to have them wanna create a simple spinner. So that's just basically a top. The most basic top you can create is what I found is a toothpick and a bottle cap. This thing will spin longer than any of the other spinners I will show you. So don't knock it just because it's simple. If this is all you have, that's fine. Um, the kids will be absolutely in awe of how long this thing will spin. So there's another simple spinner here. This, this only uses four building bricks. This is going to be a low frustration activity for kids who either have fine motor skills or if you don't have a lot of materials accessible. For older kids, you can use things like technical bricks or skate bearings and hardware to create a really nice spinner. So before starting this activity, I always find it useful to go over engineering and science vocabulary so that kids can talk like an engineer. To learn about the science of spinning, you kind of have to have an idea about linear motion too. So I go over first what inertia is from a linear motion standpoint, and then we get into things like rotation and torque and what an axis is, um, things like momentum, and also how are you going to spin better? So friction is going to come into play and angular momentum will come into play. So there's a couple of warm up activities um, that the kids will do, also a center of mass activity, so that they can get a hands-on feel for, well, what is this stuff? How is it gonna affect my spinner? And you know, if I reduce the friction, will it make my spinner spin better? And if I change my center of mass, what will happen to the spinner? Um, so we're gonna work through the five steps of the engineering design process, starting with the ask step. So the ask step is, what is the problem? Have other people solved it? And what, what do we need to solve this? Are there constraints? So some of the constraints are gonna be material constraints. Obviously there's gonna be a time constraint. And there's plenty of YouTube videos out there that show, this was a, um, this was a design that I found on YouTube. It's very clever. Um, a tween or teen boy had it on one of his YouTube channels and it uses just an axle, a wheel, and then um, three more wheels without the tires it, and rubber bands. It works really well. So I created one that was very similar based off of that design. Um, and then I also just created some that were my own, um, such as this one. So this one would work works actually pretty well for adults, but as you can see, for a kid, you might want, need to change the length of the axle because they might not have the clearance to get it through their fingers. Okay, so after the ask step, this is um, we have to go to the imagine step. So this is when we brainstorm. So you might have some ideas that come out that are like a little bit crazy, and that's okay. So we can try some crazy ideas. You might have something that, that looks like nobody else's. Um, and that's all right. So sometimes in brainstorming, you know, this is when we encourage really creative thinking 
And if you're working in small teams, you know, encourage them to come up with as many ideas as possible. You know, somebody might say, well, I think that it should have, you know, six arms instead of three. Um, well, they can try that out when they, then when they work through the next step, which is the plan step. So for the plan step, they need to draw a detailed sketch of the design. Um, this was the sketch that I had done before I came up with this design. I sort of, I had pieces around and available. So I knew what I had to work with. And um, this is actually a subsequent design. My first design didn't have these extra masses at the end and I added them on. Um, and that's one of the things that your kids will learn. If they add extra mass, it's going to end up spinning for longer. So after you plan it, that's when you create it. And sometimes your plan works out and sometimes it doesn't and that's okay. You just, you have to go back and just modify it. Um, and then after it's created, we have the testing phase. So I actually created a couple different data recording sheets so that your students can record how many seconds their spinner spins for. So you can use a stopwatch or you can use an app to record um, five different spins and then take the average. And then what they can do is they can try to improve the spin time. So doing those things we talked about, reducing friction, possibly adding mass, maybe um, changing out some of the parts that aren't working, perhaps reducing the number of arms on it. So this is the testing phase, and after that, you can either improve your design or you may have to go back, scrap your design, and start all over again. So um, after, after the engineering design process is done and you have all these spinners, um, the kids are going to do a math extension activity. So I have a couple different pages that show um, how much various parts would cost depending on what you're using. And so they create a bill of materials, which is something that you know engineers do based on what pieces they use. And then they have to go through and they will disassemble and reassemble their spinner and see how long it takes. And then also based on the volume, how much a package would cost for their spinner. And then add it up and find out, well, how many, um, how much is our, how much would a thousand spinners cost? So this is kind of, this is the math part of the activity. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the marketing extension activity. So this is after they're satisfied with their design, they need to come up with a name. So what is, who's, who needs this thing? Who needs the spinner? Maybe their name um, is based on the parts they use or what it looks like. Maybe it's based on who their customer is. And then they're gonna decide how they're gonna market it. So most kids are gonna to wanna to do the internet marketing, which is fine. I recommend using either YouTube uh, video commercial or um, use something like Canva to create um, a print to type ad, but for use on something like Instagram or Facebook. And then they need to write their copy. Well, how are they gonna grab um, a potential customer's attention? And they may also need to take a photo of their spinner to add it into the ad. So I created a, a simple example of this, um, called it the twirl girl. I said, well, this one, we're gonna market it towards girls, because why not? So after um, all that, now I'm gonna go through the different materials and why you might um, need, choose one over the other. So there's a few pros and cons with each one. Obviously, I, I went over this one a little bit already. These are very basic, basic um, parts. So you'll be able to get access to them very easily. They also spin really well, so that's another pro. The con is that they only work as a top, so they don't work as a fidget spinner. So if your kids really want a fidget spinner, you're not gonna wanna do this type. Okay, so the next type is this technical brick type. So you're most likely most likely gonna need some axles, um, either these tri pieces or this one has two arms. They, um, let's see if I can find, I think I have one. Yeah. So it's just like this, so you can insert the axles here and then also one through the center. 
if you have these pieces, it's really fast. You know, everything's at the right angle. Everything snaps together. They stay together really well. They work really pretty well. This one is probably my favorite. Um, this one was modified to add mass at the end with the tires. So it actually spins pretty well for a long time and it's also nice and easy to fidget with. Although I don't know, the kids seem to get the hang of this much faster than I do. Okay, okay so that, um, these pieces can also be kind of difficult to find. So if you don't already have them, if you don't have a friend who's in first Lego League who'll let you borrow them, um, then you might have a tough time. So this is another one that uses various axles and fittings. Um, the other thing with this is that your kids are not gonna be able to take this home with them, which might disappoint them. But um, these pieces are expensive and you're gonna want them to stay in your classroom and also so that you can disassemble them and somebody else can do this project. So the next two types are the skate bearing. So I'll show you, this is one type and this is another. And so this is just the skate bearing that I have super glued some neodymium magnets on. Now, this works really well for, for a station. So you can have various hardware out and have skate bearings that have magnets at 180 degrees or 120. You can also do 90 like this one, but what I found is that while the magnets are great for holding on the hardware, because of their very strong magnetic force, they also slow down the spinner. So while they spin fairly well, um, they're not gonna spin as long as some of the other spinners. So these are great for Obviously, they're all sticking together, but um, these are great for little kids or if you're setting up a station because they don't need to do any of the attachment. It's just it, the magnets take care of that. So these are my favorite spinners because they are easy and cheap and they actually work really well. So this is just a skate bearing, three nuts and a piece of Gorilla Tape. So this is the only tricky part is that you need to get the Gorilla Tape narrow enough so that it doesn't stick to any of the bearing here. Um, I actually found that tearing the tape works best and it doesn't have to be exact. As you can see, this part here is, is thinner than this part. So um, this one, the weights are marbles. That one also works pretty well. So you can use whatever you want. That's one of the other downsides of the magnets is that you have to use magnetic um, hardware. So obviously I could not stick the marble to this one. So your weights are limited. Although bolts and nuts work very, very well. So these are the pros and cons of the various types of spinners. I hope that was useful to you. Uh, I really enjoyed this activity. I think that my kids and I have created about 50 various fidget spinners over the last couple of weeks, um, just because there's so many different ones that you can create and try out. And I know that your students are going to be creative with this process as well. So if you feel like sharing a photo, um, I'd love to see it. You can tag me on Instagram, Meredith Anderson, um, MomGineer, or on Twitter at MomGineerMA. Um, or you can send me an email that's Meredith at MomGineer.com. I'd love to see what your students come up with um, while this fad is still going. So. Thanks for watching.